Turn to the book of John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Let me ask you this morning. If someone were to take and call you of great influence this morning, how would you respond to them? Would you be willing to reach out and take that telephone and talk to them? You see, that's important in one's life. Because here in this story that we have, that Jesus goes to a little town called Bethany, the Bible tells us down in one of the verses there, it says, The Master has come and calleth for thee. You see, there are certain calls that are all important. And listening to the Master of the universe is the most important call that you could ever receive in your life. A man from a particular denomination which people will often stand up and speak very authoritatively to the congregation told a story. A man stood up and declared, Thus saith the Lord, Even as I was with Abraham when he led the children of Israel through the wilderness, so I will be with you. Then he sat down. After a few seconds, uh, they noticed his wife kind of nudged him and then whispered something in his ear. He quickly stood back up and said, Thus saith the Lord, I was mistaken, it was Moses. Now all of us may laugh about that, but the fact of the matter is, we need to be listening. We need to be listening, thus saith the Lord. He has something to say to us. And you know, he's given us the greatest message that we could ever receive. I mean, this message right here gives us on how we can live. This message gives us warnings. This message takes and helps us when we're going through problems. It gives us comfort and strength in our lives. Look back here at John chapter number 11, if you would. John chapter number 11. Look down, if you would, at verse number 18 to begin with. Now, Bethany, it says, was nigh to Jerusalem about 15 furlongs. That's only two miles, but, uh, you know, it takes a, a pretty good time to walk two miles. If you walk slow, uh, it might take, you know, a little over maybe 45 minutes to an hour to walk that. If you walk fast... My wife and I, we try to walk uh, just about every day, at least two miles. We got to kind of uh, laid out here in New London. We'll start at our house and we'll go up and take certain streets and you'll go around and then come back down. And by the time we get back, it's two hours. And it usually takes uh, two miles and it usually takes us about a half an hour to, uh, to walk that. Well, in this case, Jesus was headed towards Bethany, it says, and he was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. Look at verse 19. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. If you were to read the pre previous 17 verses, you'll find out that Lazarus had become sick. And they had sent to Jesus and said, uh, our brother is sick. He's nigh unto death. But Jesus didn't come immediately because there was a reason behind it. You see, folks, God doesn't always tell us the reason behind things when they come into our lives. He wants you and I to stand still and to listen to him. He wants us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because he wants to accomplish some things in our life. He wants us to listen. He wants us to open our ears and have a listening ear to what he has to say. Look down to verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. You see, sometimes it takes a stillness in our lives before we really get Jesus tuned in. Before we let God really speak to our hearts. And Mary, matter of fact, we're going to go back to it in just a few seconds in the book of uh, Luke chapter 10, where Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, and she's listening to him while Martha is so busy getting involved in things, trying to impress, that she missed out on listening to Jesus. Have you ever been that in your life? You've gotten so busy that you couldn't listen? That happens a lot of times, doesn't it? I mean, does it happen to you ladies sometimes that your husbands, they're doing something and they're going, mm-hmm, yeah, and they're not listening to you at all? Come on. Thank you, ladies. 
Well, that's what happened to Martha. She got so busy on so many occasions. She was so focused on what she was doing, so focused on what she was interested in, that she failed to listen. But Mary always had a listening ear. That's true, and we'll find that out here in chapter 11 of John, as well as Luke chapter number 10. Now, look back, if you would, at verse number 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now remember, Martha is not listening the way she should. All she can be so, all she's so concentrated on the fact that something's happened to her, her brother. And Jesus is not, is not unsympathetic at this particular point. But Martha is missing the point of what Jesus is saying here. Notice what she say, he says again. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, read it with me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Do you believe that this morning? Oh, wait a minute, that's not the end of the story. Look at verse 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, Now here's the key. The Master is come and calleth for thee. Read verse 29 with me. Here we go. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Would you bow your heads with me in a word of prayer? With every head bowed and every eye closed. This morning, would you take the opportunity to say, Lord, speak to me. Give me a listening ear to what you want me to hear. Then help me to do more than just listen. Help me to put action into what I've heard. Now, Father in heaven, I ask you this morning to speak to each and every one of us, including myself, as you have this last couple of weeks, as I begin to prepare this message. Lord, I pray that we will do more than just listen. May we let it become functional in our lives. May we take the opportunity to let you empower us, to change us, to help us in being the person you want us to be. Lord, help us to be receptive to the things that you say here this morning. And I pray those who are in this auditorium, as well as those who are listening by means of the internet, I pray that they will take to heart what you have to say and then let you change whatever you desire in their lives. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Recently I was reading a story and uh, I happened to get it from uh, Dr. David Jeremiah. How many of you have heard of him before? Great preacher. Great preacher. Anyway, he was relating a story and uh, it's, it really started back during the mid-20th century. One of the most recognizable brand icons in America was this up on the screen this morning. A dog sitting there and listening uh, to what was being uh, said. And uh, it was an American dog sitting in front of an old time what we call a gramophone. Now I didn't know it was called that, but I learned that after I read the story. But anyway, uh, the dog sitting there was head cocked, listening very attentively to what was being said there on that record. And that iconic image was owned by the RCA Victor Record Company. And it was taken from a painting by English artist Francis Barad. The dog, his name is Nipper. And he had been owned by Barad's brother who had recorded his voice on early phonograph records. After the brother died, Barard inherited Nipper the dog. And the gramophone and the records. 
And so whenever the records with Nipper's master's voice were played, the dog would sit in front of the gramophone listening to the master's voice. Now folks, if a dog can have such intent interest in his master's voice, shouldn't you and I be willing to listen to the master's voice when he speaks? Shouldn't we have an attention? Shouldn't we sit there and listen in an attentive way? That was true with Mary. Matter of fact, keep your place in John chapter 11 and turn back to the book of Luke chapter 10, if you would, please. Just one book back. And if you would, look down at verse, the verses there in Luke chapter 10 and verse 38 through 42. Most of you are familiar with that story. But to get the impact of these two, chapter, two books that I'm sharing with you this morning about two sisters that were to listen to the master's voice. Look at verse number 38, if you would. Now, it came to pass, as they went, they entered into a certain village, and that little village, of course, was Bethany, two miles uh, from Jerusalem. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet, say the next uh, words with me, and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. Now look up here if you would please. Sometimes you and I can get so caught up with our activities, our work, our employment, that God is trying to speak to us, but we turn a deaf ear or we don't hear him. Because we have gotten so engrossed in those things of everyday life that we fail to listen to what he has to say. It could be that he's reaching over and tapping you on the shoulder and saying, Hey, listen, that fellow employee, he needs your help today. He needs you because he's gone through a drastic time. And he needs your encouragement. Or he needs you to talk to him about Jesus Christ because, see, he's going to have a heart attack this afternoon and he's going to die. You need to talk with him. You see, we need to be sensitive to the voice of God when he talks to us. We need to take note of what he's saying. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? I'm going to tell you something this morning. God cares about everything of your life and my life. He understands what we need. He sees far beyond the immediate of what we see. He sees what's going to happen in your life this afternoon. He knows what's going to transpire this week. And we're to listen to him because he may give us something that might change the course of things for better rather than well on our course that may lead to worse. We must have a listening voice, a listening ear to the voice of God. So God wants us to understand that. Now look down at verse 41. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. Are you listening this morning? One thing is needful and Mary has chosen that good part. Which will not be taken away from her. What was that good part? That good part was her listening to what God had to say to her life. So this morning, what does Luke, what does John have to say to you and me about listening to the master's voice? Well, look back, if you would, to John chapter 11. Let me give you some thoughts here this morning that could literally change your life and my life if we permit him. So often we let everything else encompass our hearing. Don't let that happen this morning. First of all, listening to Jesus can change the situations of our lives. You see, here was their brother. They had become grieved because he had died. He had already been dead four, four days before Jesus came. And they thought, boy, if Jesus had only been here, and they voiced that to him. Matter of fact, both of them did in the scripture uh, here. They both said, Lord, if thou hast been here, our brother had not died. 
But you see, there was a reason that this took place. And sometimes we get all upset because of things happening in our lives. My wife and I, as we were coming back from North Carolina, we were making good time. We were supposed to get here about almost 5 o'clock on Friday evening. All of a sudden, our lives came to a standstill. I mean, there was a wreck up in front of us. And a big semi had turned over and had destroyed a lot of things. It's, we, we, we literally became a parking lot for an hour and a half for us. I could have been in that accident. I could have been following that truck. But folks, when we are under God's protection, God takes care of that. But sometimes we try to rush ahead. And no doubt Mary and Martha thought, well, Jesus, you love him. Because Jesus had often come to their home. Jesus had often sat down and had a meal with them. But Jesus delayed. Why? Because God has something good he wants to do. He wants to show his mighty power. He wants to work in and through our lives. But we shut him off many times because we want it done right now. We want things taken care of in our lives right now when delay is important sometimes in God's plan. So listen to Jesus can change the situation of your lives. It can change unbelief to belief. Look down at verse 15. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go unto him. You see, Jesus will take care of things in his time. He says, wait a minute. I'm glad that I was not there. Now, he wasn't glad that the fact that something had transpired in the lives of these dear ladies. He loved them. He was such an acquaintance to them. I mean, he came and visited them often. But this transpired for the glory of God. The Bible tells us we're to let all things be done to the glory of God. And that's what he wanted to do here. He wanted to change unbelief to belief. Look at that verse again. I am glad, watch this, not for my sake, but for your sakes, that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Let's say that word together. Believe. Say it again. Here we go. Believe. Now what does God want you to believe in regards to your life today? Believe him. And he will change that unbelief to belief. But wait a minute. He wants to change the lack of understanding to understanding. They didn't understand why that Jesus had delayed. But he said, wait a minute. There's a reason. I have some lessons I want you to learn. I want to show my mighty power in your life. And also to prove to these other individuals that I'm able to raise him from the dead. And thank God he wants to show you that, hey, you don't have to worry about it. He's going to take care of you too. You see, I'm the resurrection of life, he said. Though he be, though he be dead, yet shall he live. And then he goes on to say, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall I live. Aren't you glad today that death doesn't end it all? It doesn't. We're going to live again. Even when we die in these physical bodies, it's not going to keep us there. Why? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. But wait a minute. There's something else. He wants to change, from, change unforgiveness to forgiveness. Folks, I believe today there's not a person in the world that Jesus cannot forgive. I believe he can forgive. He can forgive you. Not only that, he forgets it. The Bible says he's taken our sins and buried them in the deepest sea, put them behind his back, they remember them no more. He's taken our sins and, and moved them far, as far as the east is from the west. You see, God wants you to know that. And so 
when he takes and does something, he has a reason for it. And in this case, he wanted to change unbelief to belief. He wanted to take a lack, change a lack of understanding to understanding. He wanted to take and change unforgiveness to forgiveness. He wanted to change from the, the matter from a, a, a person going to hell for them to go to heaven. Last Sunday morning, I preached about heaven. There's a lot of folks not going there because they've never heard the message or they've never received the message of salvation. And it may be that God's waiting on you to take it to them. God wants to forgive them. Also, these disciples here, he wanted to teach them something. Do you know something? You may say, well, I've read the Bible through and through. I've heard that story before. I want to tell you something. I, I, I've, read, I've read the Bible through I don't know how many times in the last 43 years you know, alone being in the ministry. And even before that when I was saved. I've been a Christian for over 48 years now. I'm saying to you, folks, Jesus wants you and I to listen to him. And when we do, he'll change our life. But wait a minute, look down at verse number 39, would you, real quickly. Listening to the master's voice will give us opportunity to see him. You see, look down at verse 39, verse 8. It says, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, uh, stone, and Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. You see, God wants the opportunity. Are you listening this morning? God wants the opportunity to show you great and mighty things which you know not of. But sometimes we're not willing to listen to him. We're not willing to let him work in and through our lives. We want the thing done immediately instead of waiting upon the Lord. Remember what the Bible says? They that wait upon the Lord will do what? Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We're to wait on the Lord. Listening to the master's voice will give us opportunity to see him work in our lives. Remember that day as the people of Israel were coming out of Egypt? And Moses stood there by the uh, Red Sea. And what did he tell the people? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. You see, God wants us to stand still. To sit still, as Mary did there in uh, Luke chapter number 10. We need to sit still and let God speak to our hearts. You see, we got so much noise going on in our life that we don't take time to let him speak to us. And God uses different things to speak to our hearts with. Most of all, he uses this Bible, amen? God wants to speak to us. But he uses other things. He uses situations and circumstances and yes, other people in order to give a message across to us. But you see, we're so busy. We have so much noise going on, we don't hear him the way we should. But wait a minute. Look back here, if you would, at verse number 41. Take away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said... Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. There's another thing here. Listening to the master's voice is a sign of loyalty and longing and an, indica and an indication that we are eager to hear and obey what he has to say. Now, notice there in that verse. It says, then, after what? After they heard him, after he, what he said... They took away the stone. Look up here if you would please. How many of you believe that Jesus had the power just to speak and that stone would be removed? Huh? Yes. But he wanted to use other people here. It says, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Folks, the Bible says there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And when Jesus prays for you, you can be guaranteed that prayer is going to be answered. Amen. And Jesus, when we listen to him, he can speak to our hearts and he can deal with those things in our life if we will let him speak. 
wait a minute, there's something else. Would you look down at verse number 42 through 43? Here we see that God wants us to allow him to perform in our lives that which needs to be performed. Watch it. Look at it. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, read it with me. He cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Now, wait a minute. That may not mean much to you. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Even a dead man, when Jesus speaks, if he will listen, God will transform his life. And by the way, the Bible says we're all dead in trespasses and sins. But if you'll listen to the voice of God, God will change your life. God will do in your life what he did for me over 48 years ago when I heard the gospel and I, li I listened to what he had to say. And that night, God saved me and changed my life. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, thou shalt be what? Saved. And I got saved that night. So we need to allow him to show his mighty powers in and through our lives. But wait a minute, there's something else. Listening to Jesus will give us the right decisions to make. It will give us the right directions in our life. Look down at verse number 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, them, Loose him, let him go. Look at verse 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, say the next three words with me, would you please? Believed on him. Why? Because they listened to the master. The master's voice helped them to make the right decisions. The master's voice gave them the direction. But look here at verse number 46. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. You know what was the problem with their life? They really didn't listen to what Jesus had to say. All they could do was find fault with him. And many times do you realize that we even as Christians, we find fault with God and say, don't you care about me, God? Don't you love me anymore? Well, sure he does. He says, I love you with an everlasting love. His love does not take and stop because of something that we might do in our life. God keeps on loving you and me. But wait a minute. There's something else here very quickly. Look down at verse 39, if you would, again. Jesus said, take away the stone, Martha, said the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by, the time he, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Listening to the master's voice can take away your excuses. Are you hearing me this morning? When you quit making excuses and listen to the voice of God, I want to tell you something, folks. He can do great and mighty things for your life. Let's quote Jeremiah 33, 3 again together. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Can I ask you a question? Do you believe the Bible? Is that Bible verse really there in the Bible? You see, God wants you to do more than just listen. He wants you to take it to heart. See, Mary knew what Jesus could do. I mean, wait a minute. Martha knew what Jesus could do. How do you know that, preacher? Because there was no doubt in my mind that many times they saw him raise the dead. They saw him heal the leprous individuals. They saw him raise other people from the dead. And he could do it for them. But you see, sometimes we forget. And we begin to make excuses. Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Now let me ask you a very important question, very quickly. Could Jesus kept him alive even at the distance of two miles away? Distance is no factor with God. Distance is no factor with God. How many of you have ever prayed for somebody in another state and God answered that prayer and did marvelous things? Yes. By the way, you that prayed for us, 
we were quite a few hundred miles away down in North Carolina. And God took care of us because of your prayers. As I related to you a while ago, we could have been right in that accident. We were not too far from it. We could have had our car destroyed. But God took care of us. God is willing to do that. You see, God wants us not to make excuses. And we can find all kinds of excuses. If you went to Luke chapter 14, and I don't have time there this morning to, to do it, but we find these individuals making excuses. And excuses hold back the mighty power of God. They hold us back from listening to what God wants to do for our lives right now. See, oh, wait a minute. Look down at verse 42 again of our, of our text. Listening to the master's voice gives his approval. Look at verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people who stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. You see, God wants us to know he's the one that gives approval. He gave the approval for his son to come to this earth to die upon the cross for us. He gave the approval for him to take and to go to this one to raise him from the dead. That we know that God, Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. See, Mary doesn't do any of these things Instead, notice what she does. Do She, like the dog, sits there and listens to the master's voice. You see, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to listen to him this morning. He wants us to take note. Look there, if you would, in verse number 29. That gives us a validation that she heard. As soon as she heard that she arose quickly and came unto him. You know what our problem is? We have to sit back and kind of put our elbow up and our fist underneath our chin and we think, well, I don't know if he'll really do it for me. If Jesus said he'd do it for you, he'll do it. He'll do it. But sometimes we don't listen. We just hear, but we don't listen. There's a big, vast difference there. But wait a minute. Let me give you one more thought here very quickly. Look back at verse 29 again. It says, As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Listening to Jesus needs to be a quick response. She rose quickly and came to him. Don't be slow in regards to your response to him. A slow rep response may bring disaster in your life. A slow response may... Harden your heart. Uh, Paul said this in Hebrews 13, 5. Are you listening? It says this, While it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. When you delay, folks, your heart becomes hardened. I was reading a story this past week. I don't know if any of you have seen it or not. The movie... War Horse. How many of you have seen it? It's a story of a, of a horse and a young man by the name of Albert. Back in 19, the film was, uh, begins in 1912 when a teenager by the name of Albert witnesses the birth of a thoroughbred on a farm in Devon, England. Anyway, as the foal grow, grows, Albert is touched by the special tie that he has with that animal. And they begin to get to know each other so closely. And so Albert's father buys the thoroughbred at an auction and Albert vows to train the coat to do all the work around the place there on the farm. And he names the horse Joey. Remember that, would you please? He names the horse Joey. And then spends a great deal of time transforming and teaching him about working on the farm there. And in the midst of training Joey, Albert creates a special bond with him because he takes and he cuffs his hands and does a special whistle. Now, I can't do that. I just whistle the normal way. But some of you have learned that whistle. They can blow on their hands and do some special whistle. Anybody do that here? Anybody can do that? Put your hand together. Oh, okay, Eric. Eric could do it. I'd have him do it this morning, but I wouldn't want to embarrass him. 
But anyway, he's taught him this, that every time he does that whistle, when he cuffs that hand and puts that lips together on his hand, he blows that special uh, uh, whistle, and Joey comes right away, or he performs what uh, Albert has asked him to do. When World War I broke out, broke out, Joey sold the British Army, uh, 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 Albert sold, his dad did sell the, uh, the, uh, this horse to the British Army because they needed all the horses that they could get. Matter of fact, they tell us there were 8 million horses that were in that army uh, of the British Army. And so they sold it. And Albert also enlisted in the army at that particular time. But he had no idea where his beloved horse would be taken. And they were separated by hundreds of miles. And as the war draws to a close, a group of soldiers discovered Joy, the horse, brutally torn and worn because he was caught in some barbed wire. And you're familiar if you watch these war shows how the barbed wire is put up and so forth. And they decide to put him down. And as one of the sergeants raises to shoot the horse to put him out of his misery, Albert, with a bandaged eyes from an explosion, hears from the other soldiers about a horse that's going to be put down. And he wonders if it possibly that this war horse could possibly be Joey. And so all of a sudden, he puts his hands together and cuts and begins to whistle. All of a sudden, Joey lifts his head up with great enthusiasm. And Albert finds out it is his horse. And they spare the horse. Folks, when we listen to the voice of God, God will keep us from disaster. God will keep us from harm. God will keep us from death. God will keep us because we're listening to him. I want to do this morning. Are you listening to God? God speaks many times through a still small voice called the Holy Spirit. And he's tapping us on the shoulder and saying, you need to be saved today. You need to get things right with me today. You need to do this or do that, whatever it might be, that God might speak to your heart. The question is, will you listen? Would you stand with heads bowed and eyes closed with me this morning? This morning you can listen like Mary did or you can try to labor and get involved like Martha did. But how about this morning? If you listen to Jesus, folks, he will change your life. How long has it been since you've listened to the Lord and what he's tried to get your attention to do in your life? This morning, we're going to give a song of invitation. And I want to invite you to come and meet me here. I know Brother Robert's not standing here at the front and Brother Ed's out. But I'm going to stand down here in the front. And we have somebody who will take the Bible and show you how to be saved. If you're here and you've never been saved, won't you come to Christ? Maybe you're here this morning there's another decision you need to make. Maybe you need just to come to this altar and pray about a situation or pray for someone. Or maybe God's speaking to you about another decision you need to make here today. Will you listen to him? And then will you be obedient to him? Really to listen is to obey. Listening to the master because he has something wonderful for your life. Father in heaven, I pray you take your word. I pray that you would speak to each one of our hearts and show us what we need in our lives. Then Lord, help us to put action into what you, we've heard and be obedient to you. Lord, there's possibly somebody across this auditorium this morning who's never been born again. I pray they'll come and trust Christ today as their Savior. Maybe there's some folks here this morning, they have been saved but haven't been scripturally baptized. May they come and offer themselves as candidates for baptism. Maybe there's some that need to come and join this church. Maybe there's some this morning that need to come and rededicate their lives and say, Lord, I want to keep a tent of year. I want to listen to you. Lord, whatever the need, I pray you would speak here today. May your will be done. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. With heads bowed and eyes.